Are we in another housing bubble? Hey guys, it's Mac Rogers. In this video, we will answer that question, are we in another housing bubble? And at the end, I will give you my reason why not to buy a house right now here in the East Bay. No joke, every day it seems to be getting worse and worse and the warning signs looks all too familiar. Escalating home prices have both buyers and sellers worried that the market is just too you know too good to be true and the agents across the u.s are getting bombarded with the ultimate question are we in another housing bubble let's take a look at four key factors that suggest we're not in a bubble to calm some of those fears but again at the end i will tell you why you should not be buying a home right now here in the east bay the chief account the chief economist for first american mark fleming says this Let's break down his quote into four parts. First is housing supply. Last year, home values appreciated a whopping 10% on average across the country. And while this year's growth isn't expected to match that, experts are still predicting, you know, it's gonna be closer to 5%. Buyers and sellers are still worried that home prices are too high and that depreciation is likely to follow. Now, however, unlike the housing bubble years, you know, in the mid 2000s, the major factor driving up home values is that we are also in a dire inventory shortage. Usually a balanced real estate market inventory sits around six months uh, inventory. Today, the current market, it's at 1.9 months, a historically low amount of homes for sale. On top of that, inventory has slowly been declining for years now. We've been under five months inventory for the last three years. Over here in the East Bay, it's actually worse. On a normal market, we have about 30 days of inventory. Now, in seven days, inventory is gone. That means that it's only taking seven days to market a property and it gets snapped up. In comparison, the inventory level from 2005 and 2007 increased from five months to 11 months. A vast oversupply of homes that did not warrant the price appreciation that went along with it. So throwing it back to your high school uh, economics class, the biggest driver of price appreciation is a simple case of supply and demand. Hence, that's what we're seeing in the market today. Part two, the second part, housing demand. If you remember the housing boom of the mid 2000s, you know how crazy that time was uh, in real estate. Robert Scheller, a fellow at the Yale School of Management's International Center for Finance could sum it up in one phrase, and it's this phrase, irrational exuberance. For those of you who are old enough, you should remember that. In other words, the buying and selling frenzy that in part caused the market to collapse was fueled not by tactful financial decisions, but a countrywide case of FOMO, fear of missing out. Furthermore, the mortgage industry fed into this frenzy, making it easy for people to obtain home loans much higher than they could afford. Today's real estate demand, however, is a very real thing. Millennials, currently the largest generation in the US, are finally ready for home ownership and hitting the market like crazy. The health crisis is also challenging homeowners to reevaluate whether their current home meets their needs, driving more eager buyers into the market. These two big factors, coupled with historical low mortgage rates, make purchasing a home today a good financial decision. So not only is the demand very high, supply is also very low. Part three, access to credit. Simply put, access to credit during that time was very easy. I read somewhere that it was actually harder not to qualify for a loan than it was to qualify for a loan. I remember how this whole lending craziness escalated and got easier and easier to get a loan. First, there was zero down payment loans. Then it became zero down and interest only loans. Then came negative amortization loans with the down payment. Let me explain this one. Every month you had four choices of paying your mortgage. The first is the 15 year fixed monthly payment. This is the highest amount. The second is the 30 year fixed monthly payment. This is your regular monthly payment. The third is interest only payment. The fourth is called negative amortization, meaning you do not pay the full amount of your mortgage. For example, say you had 2,500 monthly payment. The negative amortization allows you to only pay 1,500 of that amount. What happens to the 1,000 balance? It gets added onto the back end of your loan or a balloon payment. Well, guess what most borrowers picked at the end of the month? 
the negative amortization. Now, if you think that was bad, the bank soon came up with the same type of program, the negative amortization with zero down. So literally, you do not have to put any money from your pocket and with your first monthly payment, you do not have to pay the full amount. And guess what? You are in the negative the very first month. But that didn't matter when price was escalating. The equity will just pay off all those negative balances. And finally, part four, equity. Following the housing and economic crash of 2008, economists, financiers, and real estate industry experts have combed through the data to figure out why the entire system crumbled the way it did. Most will agree that one of the biggest pieces of that catastrophic uh, equation came down to this, equity, or in reality, a lack of equity. In the mid 2000s, saw a massive wave of homeowners cashing out their equity in their homes. In short, they were using their homes like ATMs to afford some of the finer things in life. There were even other people that would cash out their equity and guess what kind of loan they're gonna get? a negative amortization loan. This led to a lot of negative equity situations where the amount someone owed on their home was far more than their house was worth. Many foreclosures and short sales followed, depreciating home values nationwide. Today is a much different equity picture. Cash out refinance volume over the last three years is less than a third of what it was compared to the three years before the crash. More than 38% of homeowners have paid off their mortgage free and clear, and another 18.7% have paid off over 50% of their mortgage. This positive equity perspective puts the current housing market in a much stronger place, minimizing risk of foreclosure and stabilizing home values across the US. In summary, these are the four factors that makes this not a housing bubble right now. We have very little supply. Demand is real and not superficial. Credit or lending is tight. Only real qualified buyers are out in the market right now and there is equity in the homes right now so if it's not a bubble why will I tell you not to buy right now over the years my advice uh, to both home buyers and home sellers have been the same buy and sell when you are ready willing and able not when the market dictates it right now in the East Bay multiple offers overbidding and non-contingent offers are the norm so you might tell me, yes, I'm ready to buy because there is a need for us to buy and you're also willing to bid and over, you know, and offer non-contingent offers. But are you able to compete? Here's the thing, here in Castro Valley and surrounding areas like Dublin, Pleasanton, San Ramon, and Livermore, it's a feeding frenzy right now. It's not uncommon for a million dollar property to get bid up to $1.2 million routinely. And it's not like there's only one bidder doing it. There's usually three or four others that are always above and beyond. And even if these buyers have loans and properties still need to be appraised, they are making non-contingent offers. That's practically like cash if nothing bad happens. Let me explain. For a seller, this means that they know that they will be getting 1.2 million no matter what the property appraises for and they are secure in the fact that the buyers have a loan, right? This is if everything goes well. And most of the time, it does. Actually, a majority of the time, it does end up well. For a buyer, obviously, the risks involved are enormous. Let's not even talk about the property condition. The fact that you only saw the property for 15 minutes and reviewed the report super fast. Let's just talk about the financial risk. If all of a sudden something changes with your credit or with your job and you can't get a loan, you lose that 3% deposit. And most, if not all of the time, they are asking buyers to put the full 3% deposit in escrow. You know, I had this happen to one of my clients a while back. Slightly different scenario, but the gist is the same. The lender told him that his loan was approved, so we released loan contingency. Actually, we released all contingencies at that point. Well, his lender pulled another credit report before finalizing the loan docs. Fairly standard procedure. Guess what? Something negative came up with his report and he almost did not get a loan. The only reason he still got a loan was because he was a long-standing client of the bank and they determined that the risk of loaning to him was minimal at that point. All they had to do was switch him to another product, a portfolio product, in order to still do the loan. Now, a lot of buyers, they do not fall in this category. Like I said, if there are any changes to your job or credit, your loan could vanish along with your 3% deposit. For buyers, the stress and constant disappointment right now are real. And I'm talking about buyers that are well qualified and have more than 20% to put down on a property. These used to be the golden clients. 
Now that 20% is not enough. You need at least 30% to 50% of the purchase price in cash. And here's why I say this. In my example of $1 million, say you offered $1.2 million non-contingent and say the property only appraised for $1,050,000. Your down payment will be $210,000. That's 20% of $1,050,000 plus the difference of $1.2 and $1,050,000 or about $150,000 for a total of $360,000 in down payment. Now, this scenario is real and it's happening right now. So you have to look at this and ask yourself, can I compete this way and do I have the stomach for it? If you can, by all means, let's go, call me. There's no bubble. Prices are still projected to go higher. Nationally, the forecast is 5%. Here in the Bay Area, that won't even win you a property. I think if we look back at 2021, we will go, oh my gosh, prices could be up another 15% across the East Bay. It's very real. It's happening as we speak. So when will this end? Well, heck if I know, right? I mean, if I, if I did, I won't be doing this YouTube video. I'll have one of my people do it for me. I'll tell you what I do know or what I believe. It doesn't seem like this will we will have another crash anytime soon if things are the way they are. There's simply too much demand out there and very little supply. That's not changing anytime soon. What might slow us down is affordability. If prices keep going up and interest rates which are also forecasted to go up, then we eventually run out of buyers that are just throwing cash around. We will end up with a pool of buyers that gets priced out of the market. At that point, we might start to see a leveling or maybe even a slight dip in prices. Oh, and if you're thinking or waiting for the forebearance to become a full-blown foreclosure crisis, it's not going to happen. The government and the banks will do everything in their power to not have another repeat of the 2008 fiasco. If you need further proof, look no further to forbearance keeps getting extended. For the rest of the country, you know, I don't know, Um, I think for states like California and New York and other states that have very strong economies, that's what I see happening. No crash, just prices leveling out and maybe a dip. As far as the other states are concerned, I'm not so sure. I, I think they're a little bit more vulnerable. So what do you do if you're buying here in the East Bay? Like I said, if you have the cash, go for it and do it. Still a great investment. If you don't have that kind of cash, look somewhere else that you can compete. I'm talking about you know places like the Delta region, Mount House, Tracy, Fairfield, Vacaville, Vallejo, you know, basically a galaxy far, far away. Here's another thing. You know the builders? The builders are starting to have waiting lists again. Sellers, if you're thinking of selling and you are buying in the Bay Area and making your purchase contingent upon the sale of your home, forget about it. So there you have it. We are not in a bubble. But don't buy if you're not willing to do non-contingent offers and pay over 10, 15, 20% over the asking or maybe more. Hey, thanks for watching you guys. If you're thinking of selling your home, I want to let you know that I have several ready, willing and able buyers that might be willing to pay your price. If not, I can definitely find you 10 others that would be willing to pay your price. For buyers, check out my other video on how to make an offer in this competitive market. Have a great day.